always had an entrepreneur spirit. So it was inevitable for me to go on my own and want my own business. But Yep, we back with another episode, Cruise Control, bro. Um, this is season two. I've been away for a while, bro. Mm -hmm. I've been away for a while. Yes. Life happened. But we hit season two, man. I appreciate everybody supporting, uh, giving me good feedback, even good feedback all together. I appreciate it. Um, but we are here for season two. Today I got my brother, Kurt Bone, who is, I, I don't even know how to say it, bro. <laughs> you, you're doing your thing with just promoting uh giving back to the community you know fitness now we on our third book bro third book man it's crazy to even hear that back at me you know, so you know last time we were doing we you were here for yeah. motivated to the bone i know now you're here with the adventures of curb bone curb bone and creed, creed bro yeah, that, how, that one. That one. how did you even get to this point Kendall to say that was planned, I, I can't say it was a plan to that. Um, I think the biggest thing about writing a book is living life. Right. So I just allow myself to just live life, give myself the time <clears throat> to bask in, you know, what I wanted to do moving forward with my life. But you know, we had a whole pandemic right. last year. I released that book right before the pandemic hit. So it was probably in the midst of that. It was around my birthday. So even the promotion, uh, that's why I thank you last year for helping me get it out. Even the promotion of it, I could only do so much because I had bigger plans for it. Right. I still feel like it's big plans for it because I wrote it. You know, I wrote it. It's out there. People will double back and they'll, you know, get the information they need to know from it. But um, this book I wrote this year, The Adventures of Kurt Bone and Creed, I can't say that was a plan. It was an idea that... That was my question. Yeah. What was that in your vision of 2021? It, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was an idea, you know, that, you know, I entertained. Actually, my girlfriend helped me, you know, see, like, the imagination of me writing a kid's book. She would always tell me I have, like, a vivid imagination. Right. As far as explaining things. So, she just planted the seed for that. Mm. So, I'm like, okay. And I, I'm thinking about... I, I wrote... Motivated to the bone, that's more of my life story. Right. A kid's book, a kid's book, that's a whole nother feel, but mm -hmm. I that, those are the type of mindsets you have to step out because you can limit yourself. Now, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Did you have, already have another book planned before you planned, before you wrote this one? No, no, I didn't. I, that's what I'm saying. I, I just wanted to just live life, and I still feel like the life expectancy of motivated to the bone was still going on right i still wanted people to consume that but i feel like writing this book this year it doesn't bump heads and clash with motivated to the bone i feel like you can kind of dilute your book writing unless you have like a book series to where you're telling like stories right but if you're telling like a life story it's only so much you can say you can't put out another book i'm a writer so that's a relief and that's a you know a side passion for me to be able to um, just put pen to the pad right. and just get my thoughts out. So the idea of writing a kid's comic book, I just was entertaining and entertaining it. Um, I went on vacation to Mexico. How was got, that? It was amazing. That was my first time out, out of the country too. Wow. So um, amuse, amazing, beautiful place. Water is beautiful. Just a whole beautiful country. See now, mm. what they tell us in the news yeah. is Mexico is like the worst part, mm -hmm. like the worst part of the, the world to go to. I seen some rough parts. Oh. I seen some rough parts, so I wouldn't say it would necessarily be. They show you like drug cartels, and, right? They you tell know. you they tell you the bad stuff first, mm -hmm. you know, to, just to keep you here. So, but I would say they do have a whole tourism, like just mapped out for people, like tourism spot and it's along the coastline of the beaches so mm. they make sure they separate those two but it's still beautiful places outside of them building a the whole tourism like with hotels and things so 
to you have to get the full experience of you know Mexico. Right. So just not feeling like all right. Tell us the whole truth about Mexico. Don't just feel something for tourism, and it's one beautiful spot, but it is another part of Mexico that's rough. Mm. But it is other places outside of that that should be explored too safely. You know, I don't. I don't think it's you. You have to, um, in my opinion, make sure that the people that are in charge of taking you places, you know, they taking care of you. They making you safe. Right. Because I've seen stories of people getting hijacked and things. Like you just never want to be in those positions. Those right. are the worst things you want to. Um, you want to happen as a tour tourist coming to another country. But it was a great trip, man. Yeah. But back to the book. yeah back back to the book. So I got back from Mexico and I was like, let me take a shot at this. Mind you, <clears throat> writing a kids book. So I wanted to how I structure my book, Kendall. When I can get an idea for what the title is going to be, right? Then I can start to see it. I can start to see the vision a little clearer. But when I before I get my title, <clears throat> I have to understand what's the purpose. It's always a purpose behind my book, mm. so I just didn't want to write a kid's comic book. I wanted to explore a meaning behind it, and you know I'm big on faith. Right. My motivated to the bone, big on faith. So this is a story that I wanted to build the premise off of um, just being a faithful servant. So <clears throat> Kurt Bone, it stars me, Kurt Bone, you know, in his teen years, mm. in a sense I wanted to tell a perspective of Kurt Bone being a little more polished than I was in my 10 years um, and having a little more information but still having like a sense of not knowing what he really needs to know and where, where he needs to be guided to. Right. I feel like I was missing that in my 10 years. So um, Creed, <clears throat> and you know I would search terms and I was like alright Creed, Creed. You know what does that mean? Creed is more of like a principle of like faith. It's right. like a, a credence, you know. So I'm tying the um, tying the two in, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna name the dog Creed. So Creed is a German Shepherd. And you ever hear the phrase, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. Right. So that's how that came together. <clears throat> I wanted Kurt Bonner to be able to follow a path of um, have Creed, his faithful servant, and Creed guides him. Even though he still has, doesn't have a sense of everything he needs to know, Creed directs him. And you know, right. like in real life, um, us being faithful servants of Jesus Christ, um, the Lord guides us. Even though we ask for signs, this and that, the signs are there. Right. But you have to be um, more so open to receiving them. Right. So that's how uh, the main components of just the book title and everything came together. So now that the book is out, mm -hmm. how do you feel from where the progression of the first book, mm -hmm. the second book, to the third book? Where do you see your <clears throat> progression? The first book was, so the first book was called A Life of Transition, mm -hmm. Struggle, Faith, and Ambition. I didn't even plan to put that book out. So let's start there. Yes. Let's start there. What did you see yourself mm -hmm. before you even... Mm -hmm put out any book did you see yourself as an author could you did you think about it mm -hmm. did you have a mindset for it no short answer no longer answer I had um I reflected back on a teacher I had in high school her name was Mrs. Bradford and you know she helped me fine-tune my skills mm -hmm. more so and I remember when I would write papers I, I would be someone that I have I Resonate as being an introvert. Right. So I always have these, again, a vivid imagination. I just always have thoughtful um, <clears throat> opinions or just things in my head. So when I can express that, you know, you can talk, but to actually put something to paper, you want to know, does it make sense? And she would help me with that. Right. And I feel like my thoughts were a little, little scattered, but she could see, like, a purpose there. She could see, like, you you got more of an in-depth um, perspective of what you talk about. So she just helped me. Just the little things are just fine-tuning my skills. And um, that was big. So basically she sparked that. She idea. sparked it, but mm -hmm. that I was in high school. I was a football player. Kendall, mm -hmm. You know, we touched on that last yeah. time. We touched on that whole 
the, the football experience. Yeah. Thing. I was focused on football. So you're asking whether did I see myself being off? I see myself in the NFL. Mm. <laughs> you know, we've been honest, but that's the per, I don't, I don't want to say again a limited perspective, but as athletes, we only see our um, sport, right? Which isn't bad. You want to make sure you know you're focusing on your sport, but are you locked in? You locked in, mm. but things happen, and unfortunately, you know how I discuss. <clears throat> In my in the previous podcast we did injuries happen right so you're asking me about my first book um 2015 that's when i i didn't so i published that book on amazon in 2017. it was that long ago it was that long ago i published published that on, in 2017 i wrote that book in 2015. Mm. so the summer of 2015 was rough i'm torn meniscus in my knee <clears throat> just battling that all season um, not knowing whether I was going to be the same player in football right. when I came back. So I did what I felt I would always do. I had my iPhone and I would just type notes up in it. And that whole summer, I had all of my notes in my phone. I said, you know what? Let me put these notes and I put them on paper first. I had a um, journal, wrote it all down in my journal. Um, structured the chapters and then I translated that to WordPress and I started to structure it in a book format. Right. So that's how that came about. Um, but it was more so for me to vent and get my feelings out on a, on a paper. But I did end up turning into a PDF of book. It wasn't on Amazon yet though. Mm -hmm. it came, I, I found about, out about Amazon authors two years mm -hmm. later. So it was a process. It was a process of getting to that point. So. It wasn't planned. It was more to help me. Mm. I noticed I was helping other people too, getting my story out, and me being a motivational person I was, just based on my experiences, I wanted to be mindful of, <clears throat> okay, let me not be selfish and hold all of this in. Maybe someone can resonate with what I'm going through, and right. a lot of people did. And I feel like you have. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, we've been brothers for, yeah. for however long. I, I done lost count. Right. But I feel that with you doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. and we're going to get into the, to the to the brand and everything. But as of these specific books are definitely mm -hmm. going to go a long way, mm -hmm. meaning it's going to touch people that you didn't even see coming, bro. Yeah. And like when we were talking about you being in your prime, mm -hmm. and I feel like you haven't even touched it, bro. Mm -hmm. It's so many, like, when we have conversations mm -hmm. outside of, you know, this podcast, or whatever. Yeah. You can, I can hear it in you, mm -hmm. you know, the the ambition to do more. Because, like, we, we, we have conversations all the time mm -hmm. about we don't have time to waste. It is, I, look, what's going around, you Absolutely. know? We don't have time to waste on, you know, drama or anything that takes away from us doing what God has called us to do, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, would there be another book coming? I, as of now, I want to focus on promoting um, the Adventures of Kirby on the Creek. So Say my less. yeah, my avenues now are more so book promotion. So I would um, admit I'm not the best at doing promotional style things. Those right. are things I feel it comes more natural to other people. Um, I'm more reserved, but these past years I have gotten past that. Progression. Yeah, progression. I know my um, abilities. I know what I'm great at. I know what I got to get better at. Mm. And I'm honest with myself about going about that process. So, um, Just more book promotion. I want to be able to hold like a, a book event, especially with the Adventures of Curb on Cree. I feel like the Adventures of Curb on Cree will... <clears throat> It will really elevate me in exposing people to my message. It's, I love it too because if I want to really compare it, I can to motivate it to the bone because it's similar it's similar tones and messages, but also it's in a, a um, illustration format. So you got pictures and illustrate. You know, kids love that. But also, if you're a little older too, you can look in that book and say, man, that's a great message. Right. And I'm seeing images and I'm seeing this and I'm, 
I'm saying this message of faith and I'm saying this message of failure and hey be disciplined or you know focus mm -hmm. and attention to detail it's little things that I made sure I put an emphasis on in that book and it can correlate with motivated to the bone but it's my job now like you, you asked me if I'm gonna write another book mm -hmm. I, that's not the focus It's my job now to put the spotlight on these books right. and promote them more so um, you know, also I'm a personal trainer, so I wear a lot of hats, <laughs> especially owning my own yeah. business. So I'm trying, I'm one person. I appreciate you again because you have your own podcast, you know, my brother. So giving me the platform to be able to share this information is, is big for me. It's our platform, bro. Right. But let's talk about Motivated <clears throat> to the Bone brand. Tell me about the creative process. <clears throat> Motivated to the bone, so it's an LLC now. Mm -hmm. I officially um, owned, got, it. owned it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, LLC um, got that done in April. Talk about it. Yep. So I'm planning on leaving my job in August. And I personally train, training job. I um, work at Arlington VA, and I think that's a gym right there. Yeah. Stepping out on faith. Yeah. But con continue, bro. It is, and so I've been there for two and a half years and it's been an amazing experience so i told you before of my journey through the fitness industry um at planet fitness and la fitness and my third gym which i'm currently at still now is sport and health and they really allowed me the <clears throat> the room to grow and it really taught me to be able to manage and run my own business under their umbrella so the process process mm -hmm. seeing how things are structured for trainers and this is just advice to upcoming trainers too if you want to get into this business i had my opinions on planet fitness and la fitness um i wouldn't i don't regret going through those um those two companies at all you know especially the people i met they pretty much helped me grow to the level i am now <clears throat> but it's still a business and when you feel yourself growing, um, you want to know that, hey, I can get all of the potential out of myself and not feeling like someone is capping how much you know money or income I can make or just my, my vision mm -hmm. for running or tr personal training people or fitness training or anything you know, un under the umbrella of fitness. So... That was me. That I always had an entrepreneurial spirit, so it was inevitable for me to go on my own and want my own business. But sporting health has really shown me the um, just gave me the tools. They shown me the way of how to run a, a great business and just exposing me to life outside of the area I grew in. Right. It's a more upscale area. Uh, people that have a lot more money mm. than you know the neighborhoods that I grew up in so it was interesting to see people not budge on packages upwards to 600 700 800 dollars mm. and just throwing that money at you so I know what I'm capable of again I'm in it um, for the love of it mm. but I know um, my worth. I feel as you grow and you start to study, I'm studying personal training. I'm putting in all these hours back into myself when I get home from work. So you start to understand that, hey, I know what my time is worth on that, on that side. But on the other hand, don't, don't um, leave your people because they still need you. So don't like box them out to the point where they can't access you. But it's a balance because mm -hmm. you want people to be able to commit fully to you know what you're doing and be a part of your um, plans and your business. But you, it's just a balance. I wouldn't charge that much. You have to know the area you're in, mm -hmm. but also just knowing what your time is worth. But still being able to be there for people and work work with people. But I, I have a vision. You all, all already asked me. Like my visions on things, my visions on books. I already have a plan on what I intend to do with people as far as helping my community. Right. So all of that structure is structured out. I just want to take this day by day. I'm not thinking too far ahead. Mm. Just put one foot forward and just keep it moving. So what motivates you to, 
to to want to help people um, in your community? Um, just saying how I grew up. Not a lot of resources. <clears throat> um, rough neighborhoods. A lot of great experiences. You know, we talk off camera about um, our experiences growing up, even though we didn't know each other into high school. Right. But us being who we are, black man, or black kids growing up in America, we've been through a lot. So it's not since birth. Since birth, <laughs> since birth. <laughs> like a struggle. So yeah, man, we we went to one of the worst high schools. Okay. But let me tell you something. It was like the worst high school, but we had mm -hmm. so much fun. We made we made connect like life term, lifetime connections mm -hmm. with people that they your either your brother or your sister. Mm -hmm. They basically family. Yeah, you know and. Meeting you mm -hmm. definitely in eleventh grade, we, we had to get you out of that shell, bro. Yeah, it wasn't no. I'ma sit in this corner yeah. and just look that's, out, look outside. That's nah, you gonna talk. That's a great um, view too, mm -hmm. because <clears throat> again, me knowing how my personality, I am. I'm a reserved person, private. These days, I'm more open. Mm -hmm. But back then, I think I wouldn't change myself on not being too open because i feel like you people need to earn your trust but i look back i'm not upset at people um doing it's exclusively like you mm -hmm. with how you are kendall you was a wild wild yes. man in <laughs> high yes. school you know like but the fact that we're close friends now mm -hmm. is and we're the polar we're we were the polar opposites then mm -hmm. I feel like we both gave each other something. Yeah, you definitely calmed me down. Yeah, so yeah, we gave... Like, your, just your whole mm -hmm. spirit, but it definitely yeah. calmed me down. Yeah, but us coming together, I feel like I needed that. I need. I think God places people in your life, too, and you like... Almost definitely. Man, how... Like, I couldn't imagine having a friend like that. And I would get irritated, mm. but I would still love you to the point, <laughs> like... I'm not going to, you know, kick your ass ass, yeah, yeah. but you need that. You need that push. Mm -hmm. And you would, you would get me out, get me out the house. Y'all come knocking on my door. Y'all would make sure, man, I would, I would come with y'all yeah, to man. events and stuff. So, but I thank you for that because those are things that I still hold with me now when I need to get out of certain comfort, zone. comfort zones and mm -hmm. niches that I grew up my whole life in. Right. But again, that's not escaping my total personality, though, because I, that's still who oh, I no, am. No, no. Never that. But I, it's a balance. I we, think for me, bro, with with you, mm -hmm. um, Tebo, mm -hmm. Jacob, Jamar, mm -hmm. Tavon, all the fellas, um, and Ace, y'all helped me to figure out life is more about giggles and jokes. Yeah. You know, in yeah. high school, that's what it was all yeah, about, the class clown. But once that we graduated mm -hmm. and we didn't see each other every day, mm -hmm. that's when it hit. Life got very real. It got really real. It was just like, all right, my boy's gone, mm -hmm. my sister's gone. Yeah, you by yourself. And I'm you by myself. Out. What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. You know, I got this school over here. I got oh. this school over here. Oh, I know for a fact I can't pay for this school, yeah. so now I got to go to this school. Mm -hmm. You know, and... That separation, it really put me in the mindset of, all right, life ain't a game. Mm -hmm. It ain't no more high school. Mm -hmm. You know, high school was just a, like a little requirement. Yeah. You know, if you get if you get the there, bare you get minimum. There. Especially in this county. In this county is the worst because, <clears throat> again, us growing up in the neighborhoods mm -hmm. we're in, and, okay, you're plucking us out of that, and... Now we're in the real world, yeah. and we have to actually apply skill sets that we never attained. Oh my gosh, we were. We could tell you some stories. We were failed. We could definitely tell y'all some stories, man. But we're not gonna say this. This county is the worst, mm. just educational wise. It's this, a lot of time. I feel like because we even our experiences. Yeah. We are very creative people. Even when in high school, you joke a lot, and like you were a mm -hmm. naturally funny person. And I think that's the part where, <clears throat> especially in, you know, the media or just outlets that paint black kids um, in, in certain, like, rough neighborhoods a certain mm -hmm. way, 
they don't really understand we are very talented individuals. Oh, yeah. But you can channel and put your energy into either a negative direction or a positive mm -hmm. direction. And unfortunately, we're put more so in negative circumstances. So you're going to be more drawn to negative circumstances mm -hmm. which affect your behavior. Right. So Especially if you see it every day. If you see it every day, it's inevitable. So it's hard to judge these kids. I just think, even again, you know, you was talking about the book with Kurt Bone and Creed. Mm. That's the message I wanted to convey. We need guidance. It makes sense. I wanted to. I needed that as a team, even though I still had enough um, wherewithal in my mind to get myself on the right path. I could have saved myself a lot of trouble mm -hmm. if I had the proper guidance. And that's not to say my parents did a, a bad job. They were great. But you're going out in the world. And they did the best they could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, and we're saying that now I have um, two nieces. And, man, they're growing up. My um, oldest niece, she's about to go to middle school. And Jesus. just... <laughs> Kendall, like, I remember holding her in my oh, arms, gosh. man. I don't know exactly which one you're talking about. Yeah, she's about to go to middle school, and I'm just, she got a Snapchat, um, TikTok, my other niece, same thing. And I'm like, D you know, we was we talk off camera, too, about mm -hmm. everything that goes on and everything they're exposed to. And I see them watching some of that stuff. They're going to be exposed to TikTok, and, mm -hmm. and it's like, man, they're so confused. Right. We were, like kind of confused too mm -hmm. but it was more of a curiosity rather than them just throwing everything at their face now right. there's no curiosity anymore they're telling you everything and they're confusing these kids mm -hmm. you know with you know their emotional their emotional state their mindset so again my job as an uncle is to be close and stay close to them as right. they grow up because again I don't. I want to save them the trouble of going through some of them mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know that you see a lot of other kids go through. So how, in your opinion, how can we meet the the young youth halfway? <clears throat> just being active. Mm -hmm. So and that's just me doing it my way and you doing it your way. Mm -hmm. So if you can provide um, the messages you provide and just people you're bringing on your platform, right? Because in some way, I feel like it's going to connect to the youth especially them growing up in that that sweet spot age like 13 14 because i know even some of them may be listening to this podcast you know when it's released so right but it's just being available to them um you know it's kind of iffy with how parents feel as far as letting people tell their kids a lot of things or just giving them um guidance on life right. but if you're able to be in that position to where you're allowed to help a kid, man, get them all the information that we have learned just in these past few years. Mm -hmm. You know, so just just being available to them. So my idea, where well, I had this idea of, um, you know how people do the turkey drives yeah. and all that during, um, I say, you know, it's a lot of churches that do. Mm -hmm. uh, turkey drives as well as community centers and all that. I said, in high school, we used to mm -hmm. basically lie on the community service right. sheet. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Right. And now these high school kids are <clears throat> basically required to actually go out and get community service out and have uh -huh. like extra, extra, extra um, I don't want to say validation, but mm -hmm. they, they're looking into if you actually got these hours from this place. Wow. So I said, what if some of these churches, um, community centers, whatever you want to call it, partners, mm -hmm. have a partnership with these high schools and get these kids what they need. Easy. Instead of waiting until they get to the senior year, they can have community service hours every year doing a turkey drive to to pass out to yeah. the, you know to the families let's get them active mm -hmm. you know because some of these kids when school's over mm -hmm. it's over right, it's you know they're in the house playing the game you know what i'm saying i don't even know what the age requirement is in maryland to work yeah 
What is the actual age? Yeah, that's, you got me. I I guess fifteen. I think fifteen. See, I would don't see know. some job listings, like when I was a teen. But I never had a job as a teen, so yeah. that would be something that does need to, need to be entertained. But you hit it right on the head. Mm -hmm. It's it's mind boggling that <clears throat> those things aren't a given, mm -hmm. and it feels like the the folks like me and you are putting in more work. You know, on the ground mm -hmm. as far as wanting to just even our visions for that and just like man you, maybe it's more to it as far as a budget and money yeah. they have to do it fine detail find out the details and all of that mm -hmm. but it, it shouldn't be that long of a process for kids to be waiting until they in high school and i i always found it odd that why are you waiting to high school to fill these requirements and you, and like you said, we would lie on that. I right, think, man. Hundred, hundred or so hours, and that's. I don't feel like it's sad to say that, but again, that's how we grew up. Right. We we took a lot of shortcuts mm -hmm. before we was awake, awakened to, you or know, aware. doing better or mm -hmm. aware to doing, doing better. You know, that's just how it is. You gonna take a lot of shortcuts until, um, the system is prepping you to put you in places to where you can thrive right i'm not i'm not going to be willing to want to do something that doesn't bring me like the joy to do it right more than you just telling me hey this is a requirement you do need discipline to be able you, everything's not going to be fun in life mm. but give these kids or help these kids find their lanes and just expose them to something different something different that they never Got a chance to do it again, especially in this age. You know, they just come home, they're on their phones, they're on their tablets. So, I don't got the answers to that. I have the answers to what I'm doing with my business. Right. <clears throat> so, I can't speak to that, but I can speak to what I'm doing and what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't have all of the money, you know, as of now to do those things, but that's not an excuse. Okay. I, as you can see, um, I run boot camps. Um, on Saturdays, and I charge ten dollars. Ten dollars is pocket money, right. you know, for someone to come out and get a a hit workout and a cool workout, and it's beneficial. And I give I give away things. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't have a lot of money to give away, but I go in my pockets and I buy um, prizes mm -hmm. and gifts and stuff to do giveaways for people. It's giving back. So it ain't. And I know God is going to reward me tenfold. So I'm not um, more in a mindset of I'm lacking. Mm -hmm. I feel like just even me just being a creative I am, I want to give. I want to give. So I'm not, again, I'm not wasting time to, man, I don't got the money to do this. I'm not. I'm wasting my time. To, man, these people don't want to pay me. Whatever. I'm not. I'm not. No, no. Like, my time is more than money. Right. You know, I feel more accomplished when I can hear someone tell me that me impacting their lives by providing this um, community fitness event for them, you know, that helped them. That helped them see a little clearer for the week. You know, they may have had a rough day and coming to my boot camp brightened their day. Right. So um, just hearing things like that keeps me going also. Even though I'm a hell of a motivator, I still need to hear that because I want to know that people are actually getting something out of what I'm doing. Right. You know? But I still keep at the base of what I'm doing, my purpose for it all. So I'm a servant of God. Like I'm not in it to <clears throat> hear people's opinions, but it's just a reaffirming of everything I'm doing every day, no matter how small it is ties into the bigger purpose of everything that I have seen, you know, for my vision so far. So Right. Mm -hmm. So who or what just keeps you motivated on a like a I don't wanna say a day to day, but day to day. We'll go with day to day. Dang, what keeps me motivated? So of course my family and just being in a position I am now, knowing all of the information I know, just bringing awareness to them. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to, because I'm, I'm a personal trainer, so 
I came, my mom like has like a nagging shoulder injury right now, so I've been helping her rehab, rehab that. And she's actually seeing progress right. in that. And she doesn't have to go and spend hundreds of dollars on a physical therapist, right. you know. I spent over $500 to get my ACE, you know, certification to mm -hmm. become a personal trainer. So, you know, they supply you with all of the um, information to be able to, again, I'm not a, a, a certified physical therapist or anything like that. But you can still within your scope of practice as a personal trainer know what type of exercise you can give to someone right. to help them with an injury. So mm -hmm. that's big. Helping my family, it just brings a smile to my face. And just them seeing me grow up. And again, I was a quiet kid. Just I got into trouble, but I wasn't a troublemaker. Right. You no, know, I think it was just more so out of curiosity. And, you know, just, again, the environments I was growing up in. But to see, for them to see me <clears throat> uh, put books out, and they're looking at it like... That was definitely my next question. Yeah. What, like, how do you... What is your, your parents' reaction? Like, seeing their son do all these great things? They they were amazed. I think it, it was... It took them some time to really understand, though, because... That was nothing like any of us in our family had seen. Mm -hmm. Again, I didn't see myself becoming an author. It was uh, more so of an outlet um, at first. But when they actually see their son on Amazon and his book is published on Amazon, right. that's a whole different, you know, um, feeling and story. And that's outside of just it being a known. Um, um, entity, right. like Amazon, is more so of like, I'm proud of you for stepping out of, <clears throat> you know, what do they call it? Stepping out of um, your comfort zone. Not the comfort zone, like the, um, just the um, the stigmas of how we grew up. Right. We wasn't exposed to books, at least in my family. I can't speak for the whole experience of, you know, um, African Americans mm. in this country, but. My family, we didn't grow up being exposed to all of that. They told me a lot of things, but a lot of things, they were more focused on putting food on the table. Mm -hmm. So, and my job was to go to school, do good in school, and, you know, they were always working. So, between them always working, me trying to figure out and learn things on my own, right. I feel like I was a kid that you can leave. <laughs> Not physically leave, mm -hmm. but leave by himself mm -hmm. to be a. Cause I I was just all always that. Um, I had that vivid kind of um, imagination, like I was talking about earlier, and I always explored. Um, so for example, say I was a kid, I would always um, put together. I was a big wrestling fan, mm -hmm. and we both are. yeah, I was a huge wrestling fan back when it was good. Yeah. And I would like set up, you know, I would have like all the um, action figure dolls and all of that. And I would just set up like whole arenas in my room, bro. Mm -hmm. And it's just that. I can believe uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> and, it would, and just reenacting all of that. And again, it's just you are your, I feel like you your biggest fan before anyone else is your, can be your biggest fan. Mm -hmm. But I could entertain myself is pretty much what I'm saying. So um, that allowed me to. Um, understand and fast track me faster than you know other kids again I went through my period of um, setbacks and depression mm -hmm. in my late teens but it didn't stop me from ultimately figuring out my path but like I said if I could have got there sooner that would have been great but again we're just not exposed to a lot <clears throat> but it was just amazing for them to just witness me put my um, books out and mm -hmm. just see all of the feedback, man. You know, you posted the social media. Everyone is giving you all the love and praise that seeing you um, work. A lot of people didn't even know, again, I was an author. So for, for them to see it the first time, they think, you know, you may just be an athlete. And I'm like, I do more than just play my sport. Right. You know, I love other things too. So it's important to be able to show people that. And more so, I always aim for the kids. Mm. 
um, more than people around my age group because kids' minds can be um, like twisted at a early, or persuaded at an early age, mm -hmm. either negatively or positively. But again, that's just based on you know what they're saying. So if they can see like, oh man, you 27 years old and I'm putting out books like this. They can be motivated to do it at 16, 17. Right. They don't have to wait to, mm -hmm. you know. Like I said, this this could have been something that possibly could have been done early in my life, <clears throat> but it's still things I had to learn. But again, I live life. I don't just write books all the time. Right. I live my life, but it is an outlet. But I let information and um, the ideas, I let all of that come to me. I don't force any of this stuff. So it's basically like perfect timing. Perfect timing, so. So we talk about motivated to the bone as a as a brand. Mm -hmm. Was there any other brands that you looked up to or saw that inspired you? You know, I'd be remiss if I ain't talking about Nipsey, man. Mm -hmm. Nipsey Hustle. Um, I feel like he inspired that. Uh, motivated to the bone came about in October of. 2018 I was at LA Fitness and I seen Nipsey I became a fan of Nipsey at around 2012 late 2012 probably like 2013 but to see his brand grow and to really see him like pretty much at the bottom and him just doing what he could do with his budget right. he made it happen mm -hmm. so I got inspired by that, and I'm like, all right, I see his um, brand is called the Marathon. I'm like, man, what could I call my, what could I call my brand? And I'm like, all right, I, it needs to be unique to me, and you know, my nickname is Kurt Bone, mm -hmm. and I just started to just Google and mess around and play with like just word play with words with bone. And, right. <clears throat> again, we talked about the motivational part of it. I feel like I'm a very motivational person. And I'm like, all right. Um, I looked up to the bone, um, meaning, and <clears throat> me being in my faith, it was something that resonated with me because the definition read, um, to the bone means something that has a deeper meaning or deeper purpose. Mm -hmm. So motivation is good by itself, but being motivated to the bone can be great for your life because you have a purpose attached to your motivation. Mm. So that's how that came about. But I was a big Nipsey Hussle fan. Um, and he, he helped me really see how doing things independently, though it may take you a long time to get where you want to get, mm. I feel it's the right way to go about um, doing things, how you need to do it. Because you don't want anyone in between your um, vision and throwing off you know what you have in your mind or what you have planned what you got planned so it's just cutting the middleman out cutting those people out and listen i'm gonna go directly to the source and go maybe to another small business maybe they they can make t-shirts for me or you know they can um um, set up an event for me, but that's the connection that I feel like we need to start making right. and he was already doing that in his um, neighborhood of Crenshaw in California So that was a huge inspiration for me I agree, bro, mm -hmm. especially How Nip started mm -hmm. and I can see the reflection that he had mm -hmm. on both of us, mm -hmm. you know, we basically talk about it all the time um but with this motivated to the bone, you have a symbol of an anchor. Mm -hmm. And that's why anytime you drop something, yeah. I support it. Because the beginning of the year, and we talk about this all the time, mm -hmm. my uh, pastor taught up, the word of the year was uh, anchored. Mm -hmm. And it just it was a big connection with me yeah you know just being anchored in god and just knowing that whatever you go through you have an anchor in him to sustain whatever you're going through <laughs> and we talked about it and you just i remember we were on the phone and you're just like bro i need like a symbol and i was just like bro it's gonna come to you yeah i can't tell you what this is gonna you be did say that but 
it's going to come to you and it's going to be perfect. And the following week, <laughs> you had like this mock up of what you wanted. Mm -hmm. And it's been that ever since, bro. Yeah, so that's that's just awesome to hear. Because everything you just said, that was what it meant to me too. Right. So <clears throat> anchor that anchor is just portraying and it's um not penetrating the motivated to the bone or the MTTB mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it's just showing like um you won't be crushed. You know, you'll be anchored. So it's not breaking my bones, it's just anchoring anchoring me down to be able to stay in my purpose mm -hmm. and um, stay fulfilled and stay passionate, um, lively about what I'm doing right. in life. So, Well, bro, I just got one more question. Yeah. What, what else can we expect mm -hmm. for the rest of 2021? What we can expect from me in 2021 is just <clears throat> again doing the doing the groundwork. I really want to make myself available to people, and and this will be posted on YouTube. So I'm starting my um, YouTube page or my YouTube series that will be called um, Building a Business Motivated to the Bone, and it's just a behind the scenes of everything that I'm doing and building my business up. Right. I feel like that's a real personal in-depth perspective you can give someone mm -hmm. because again I'm I would call myself a reserved person but again we talked about this off camera. I feel like me and you both we always have great messages right. whether we sharing that to each other or on social media. It's mm -hmm. time for us to be visual and put these visions out. You know, it's I feel like it can be selfish in the sense for us to just be holding all of this knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, we just going day to day like, we talk every day about these great visions we have, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's time for it's time for it to reach more people. Yeah. And if we can take the proper steps in doing that, I'm all for that. So um, that's the main focus. My YouTube page, I really want people to really get to know me more. Right. And I'm gonna just be promoting all of my work, man, so. I definitely appreciate you for coming on. Bro. I appreciate and you, just, my brother. Uh, sharing your story mm -hmm. and sharing what you're going through. Mm -hmm. So somebody else behind us, around us, or yeah. in front of us, mm -hmm. age-wise, feels inspired and motivated to do or to find out what God has called them to do. Yes. You know, and to hear that your first book was 2017. Mm -hmm. It's still, it's still crazy to me because I remember you telling me about it, <laughs> but I don't remember it being in 2017. Yeah, it's 2017. I published it. And I was, I was fresh out of college, bro. And now look at you, bro. Mm -hmm. you, your third book. Before, you what, 26? I'm 27. Now. 27, bro. Mm -hmm. Before 30. Yep. Three books. Yep. Published on Amazon. Yeah. Flourishing, bro. And I'm not a bragger. But again, no, give you your I know, and bro. I know you are, and I'm not the type of person that's just going, "Hey, man, da da da, I got this, that." I'm like, I let the work speak for itself. Yeah. But that's cool. I got my friends; I they going, gonna they going to size flowers, me up, bro. and they, you know. So three I three books before thirty. Yeah, that is that's big, and I I really have to because I I feel like you can just be in a constant work mode, mm -hmm. and you really do have to take the time, like. Dang, I wrote three book, books, bro. And I'm like, I didn't see this for myself. Mm -hmm. But again, that's that limited perspective we've mm -hmm. just been talking about. I feel like that's been programmed, you know. So it's just unlearning habits that mm -hmm. we had growing up. And you just see when we don't place limits on ourselves because we only failing when we in that limited mindset. Right. When we're not placing, placing limits on ourselves, man, we can be great. Can be extraordinary man god put us here to do that so i appreciate you bro yes sir for coming on here man it's so much bad news yeah. that we hear every day so i just try to use this platform to spread the good news bro yeah. the, this, the people around me that are doing great things mm -hmm. you know the people that are up and coming mm -hmm. you know that's what i plan to do with this platform this mm -hmm. podcast of uh, just a Keep people motivated. Yeah. 
you know, to, to do something outside the box. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody can rap mm -hmm. nowadays. You know what I'm saying? If you rap, be yeah. the best rapper but you can be. It. But you do know it. What I'm Don't just Don't, do it to you know, like put out this bad energy. Like you said, we just we in it for the for these kids, man. Right. We can't let them. Most definitely, we man. Can't. They the next generation. We can't um, let them down. Exactly, you know? and that's how I feel. People, um, <laughs> when when I got finished the the last season, episode six. Uh -huh. um, People was just asking me random questions mm -hmm. of um, why don't you talk about anything fun and you know uh, just out the box you, you know like you funny and all this mm -hmm. I'm just like it's a lot of podcasts like that mm -hmm. if you want that it's plenty of them mm -hmm. go to the section where it says comedy yep. and you can go have 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 the pick of your life Simple. you know what I'm saying but as for this platform. I want to use it to motivate people, to get people going, or, like I said, we have so many platforms of where they just spread nothing but negativity mm -hmm. of the CNNs, the Foxes, the, the, those type of platforms where they just constantly just push the, the negativity on you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I, you know, I had to really get down on my knees and pray and mm -hmm. ask, like, how can I spread positivity? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because we grew up in areas where it was just nothing but negativity, mm -hmm. you know? So we went to high school mm -hmm. and all that up where it was just nothing but negativity. No so, platforms to express, you know, what you're going through. So. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But so... That's what I plan to do with this one, bro. And I appreciate you for coming on, yes, sir. sharing your your wisdom, your truth, as well as, you know, keeping us all motivated by seeing what you're doing every every yeah. day. And yeah, you know I'm on it. I'm on social media um, weekly, you know. Um, words of wisdom. Yeah, words of wisdom. You see, um, I do post. Again, that's something, again, I don't rush. Right. I want to make sure that those posts are concise and they're clear for people to understand. I'm mm -hmm. not just trying to <clears throat> meet a quota every week and post something every week. When I post, this with purpose. Mm -hmm. I enjoy my own life, too. You know, I'll post um, pictures in there, but when I really want to give motivation, I'm thoughtful. Right. There's a purpose behind it. It's always an intent, so. I appreciate you, bro. Before we go, mm. we got to shout my books out, man. Hey, man. Uh, the Adventures of Kurt Bonacree, Cree, y'all go and grab that on Amazon. Um, it's doing great um, right now. Um, get it. You got kids, please go and get that book for them. Go get it. Go get that book for them. Um, Motivated to the Bone is still there, but you can just type in Curtis Bisco on Amazon, or you can type in the book names, The Adventures of Kurt Bonacree, Cree, or Motivated to the Bone. Do the last one, too, bro. Yeah, and... A life of transition, struggle, faith, and ambition. That's my first one. You know, so if you want to check that book out, you can just see my progression, how mm -hmm. I grew. It's love, man. It's all love. Where can people find you if they have a social media? So I'm on IG mostly, um, IG and Facebook. Um, so my Instagram is motivated to the bone at motivated to the bone, mm -hmm. and my Facebook is Curtis Bisco. I'm on Twitter too. Um, my Twitter is. Um, Motivated TTB. Yes, Motivated T. I changed my, that's why I had to think. <laughs> I changed my username because I don't be on Twitter like I used to. Hey, Twitter, wow, but that's it, another it, conversation. And that's why bro. I don't, I be in and out. It, Twitter is too much being thrown at you. So that's why I have to it's scale like, it It's down. an opinionated uh, app. It, yeah, and I, I got to just detach from it. It's a lot of things that I still love to follow on Twitter, but at Motivated TTB is my Twitter. Yes, sir. But like I say, man, I appreciate y'all for listening. Um, I always have this phrase at the end of the, uh -huh. the episode, but I'm going to switch it. Uh, usually I say, know your purpose and all yeah. that. But this season, take your power back. Take your power back. Take your power back. Mentally, emotionally. That's all I got to say. I appreciate y'all for listening.